From the Bet MGM studio, it's the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Glad to have you with us as we start tracking towards Monday Night Football, which is next Monday in Miami. Bit of an odd week preparing or a little, little different schedule? Well, well, yeah, I mean, you're probably just a little different schedule, but I mean, it'll allow us an opportunity to, to rest up and to, to get an extra day and you know, we, we need all the, the time and the meeting that we can get and the ability to um, to show our guys reps and, and plays and formations and motions and all the things that they're going to do uh, Monday night. The Titans make a roster move today, waving linebacker Monty Rice. Mike, is there a Titans player on the current active roster or even the practice squad who has a chance to sort of jump into Monty Rice's space? Well, I, you know, we've, we've had Otis uh, with us. Uh, Otis Reese has been with us through training camp and uh, has been active a little bit and then been on the practice squad working and, and really working hard developing and so you know I think that probably the first uh, opportunity would go to him and then we'll see where things go from there. All right so as you wrap up the game on Sunday final thoughts about the loss to the Colts. Oh just you know disappointed disappointed that um, you know that we played well at times and just you know not not well enough and, and just weren't able to finish it off and you know played complimentary but unfortunately you know mistakes on special teams um you know in x plays and in explosive games on on defense you know and the and, and critical missed opportunities on offense really hurt you know penalties or you know the ability to to go down there and, and keep the momentum and, and finish the game with with a, with a touchdown it certainly wasn't hard to find Mike Vrabel's six-pack, though. A lot of really good plays from this ball game for the Titans. Let's start with the touchdown right off the bat. It's Derrick Henry. Yeah, just a great opportunity there for us to get into the drive. And you could see um, right there at the beginning of that play, you know, Chris Moore coming in and sealing the, the support player. You see Jalen and Peter getting into it. So now when Derrick has, you know, has to come back, and he, we want him to cut back, and you, you can see that he doesn't have to lose ground, and Derek can cannot break stride and and keep rolling. So, to to me, that's you know how we used to run the football around here, and, and everybody doing our part, and then Derek, um, you know, beating that that last guy to the end zone. Derek missed uh, the fourth quarter of the ball game, put into concu- or put in checked for a concussion is the proper mm-hmm. way to say it. What I was trying to say is he was not put into concussion nope. protocol. Is he still tracking? Okay? Yep, everything uh, is, seems great and doing well. And uh, we'll see again how he's feeling in the morning and, and move on from there. Good stuff. Unusual play next. Will Levis has a problem and then causes a problem for someone else. Yeah, I don't want to see the quarterback, you know, his arm get hit as we're going to throw. But, you know, we, I appreciate our, our willingness to go play to the recovery of the football. Um, as Blackman was, was starting to get up, he, he lost control of the football, and then their the wills, you know, our will is there to, to recover it. And, uh, you know, a huge play. And again, I think that just, you know, goes to the competitiveness and the effort. Uh, and he wasn't alone. There were other players that were doing that on offense and in defense and, you know, finishing to the recovery of the football and then letting the officials sort it out. Guys respond to that when your quarterback plays that way. I think so. You know, I mean, I hope that we can all play that way. All right, let's take a look at a deep pass. Will Levis to DeAndre Hopkins. Yep, it's, it's all going to start with a pocket, and, and it wasn't uh, the best pocket, but what, what you see there is a quarterback willing to turn around and stare the, the, the rusher uh, in the face and, and deliver a, a good layered football right here to DeAndre in the seam, and you know, we're able to punch it in shortly thereafter. Yeah, 27-yard gain took it down to the five. Derrick Henry doing the honors right after that. Then let's take a look at some good red zone defense from the Titans. Danico Autry. Knew it was going to be a huge challenge, and, and we played well. We stopped the run on early downs, and then, you know, I thought the, the ability to get guys covered up in the end zone, and as he started to extend the play, you know, guys start to uncover. 
but you can see we cage him in there and, and Jeffrey does a great job of coming around, forcing him back into Nico. Arden and Harold did a great job of collapsing a pocket. You know, just a great example of team defense and, and getting a coverage sack and not only a coverage sack, but a turnover and then there's Elijah to recover it. Let's take a look at the two-point play for the Colts that ends up being two points for the Titans. Two big points. And again, you defend every blade of grass and you know we've done that uh, numerous times. Uh, in, in the past years and you know the quarterback was was under pressure and ma you know made a you know, mistake or you know threw it blind and tipped the running back tipped it and right into hook and again well, guys are finishing and those are huge two points 100 yards first time the Titans have done that since that rule change came into being it's happened only a ha handful of times in the NFL which rule change would that be? <clears throat> add the two point. Oh, I thought you meant that it couldn't be longer than 100. How, do they add the, the distance in the end zone? They do add the distance okay. in the end zone. I thought it used to just be 99 was the longest play. Did they change that too? There was a time. It was 109 yeah. yards was the longest play on a fumble returned by Ed Reed. There you go. That's the record. They, it ain't getting any more than They're that. They're not getting any <laughs> further than that. <laughs> I'm going to choke. All right. Garter Mitchell going to get sacked right here. I do know that's going to happen. Yep. And again, here's another goal line sack and a stand on third down. And, you know, the pressure and the coverage, they're trying to bunch us up and pick us. And, you know, I thought the players were prepared. I thought they executed. And, uh, you know, it just it, it sucks to come up short. They put a lot into it and, you know, in all three phases. And, you know, but it's certainly being able to defend the people down there in the way that we do uh, gives us a lot of hope. And then Will Levis taking the Titans down the field late in the fourth quarter. He finds DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, I, I'm curious to see the, the view we have on this, but there's good arm angle. But, you know, you see the route craft here from Hop, and they're working a combination coverage, and, and you'll see it. So Hop starts up, and, you know, they pass it off. And so he kind of looks at the, at the outside guy and then, you know, breaks away. So, you know, both teams scored on this same play, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, we weren't able to stop them there at the end, but that's that's the same play that they used uh, down there to score at the end. Going to go to the Vrabel Strader next, but first, I want you to meet some of our Tennessee Titans Mr. Football winners from earlier today. The award ceremony held in a luncheon at Nissan Stadium. Very special day. There were 10 of them. Let's meet three of them as we go to break on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. Dawson White, quarterback safety. Isaiah Groves, running back. Rodarius Jackson, right receiver. From the Bet MGM studio, the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Seat Geek. Time to go to the Vrabel Strader. All right. Nice. Hey, some creative stuff you guys have been doing. Did some of it on Sunday. This was a pretty play. Yeah, and then let me just first say, you know, we don't want to sit there and, and make the whole offense, you know, gimmicky. You know, right. we, we want to make it sound. We want to make sure that it's, it's building off of things that we've done and trying to show looks. And, you know, I think that there's a place for some of these plays, and we've been able to hit some of them, and some of them we haven't. Um, but they, they've been able to get us some explosive gains, and we have to try to continue to do that to move the football. And, you know, this is just out of a 21 personnel package here. You know, we see the tight end in, in the backfield creating a fullback look um, off of a run that we'll run, you know, numerous times here with this toss. Normally, Nick will come in here and crack, okay, and the fullback will lead here. We get the puller around, and sometimes that'll be Derek or Tajay, whatever's going on there. Um, and as we progress through, you know, being able to throw it back here behind the line of scrimmage, backwards pass, allows then Will now to extend and throw the pass if it's not there throw it away. We've also hit hop right early in the season. Atlanta, we've had some of these plays, okay, whether it was, you know, the Chargers or anything else where, you know, he's been taken off and reading this post safety, keeping it high or bending and trying to eat up two players. You can see he eats up these two players and now we get Nick Westbrook Akine out the back door for a 28-yard game. And it's just about marrying plays, marrying run plays, you know, the action that we'd like to try to get is, you know, can you get the end and try to run and chase, right? Or are they kind of checking? And you'll see this from the end zone, you know, our ability to, to try to manipulate these ends down here and slow them down from chasing 
So now if they see the quarterback boot, oh, is it a boot? Are they going to throw it back to him? You know, what are they going to do? And being able to slow them down a little bit, as you see, you know, here, next time we boot out of here, uh, we're probably going to get him, you know, to kind of check back, and now we'll get a cutback lane. So as you start to build things, you know, he's looking, obviously, reading top down. Don't think it's going to be hop. But then being able to build uh, just somebody coming into his vision, not knowing how much long you're going to have to hold on to the football. When you run 42 times and run effectively, they're going to bite on this look to give you these opportunities. Yeah, you're going to get, you know, I mean, you're going to get backers here that are flying where Nick had gone in there earlier and maybe cracked one of these guys. Now you're getting them flying, and then Nick can, can get out the back door. Good stuff. We've got the... <laughs> We've got a lot more coming we up. We've got good stuff. We've got good stuff. On. Maybe I'll learn how to talk on this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show. Let's meet some more of our Mr. Football winners from earlier today. My name is Keyshawn Tarleton, quarterback. Kelvin Perkins, Southwood High School quarterback. Boo Carter, athlete, commit to the University of Tennessee. When we interviewed the Titans director of sports performance, Frank Perino, earlier this season, he made constant reference to Lauren. Now, the staff here knew he was talking about, but most outside of Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park wouldn't automatically know. So, in tonight's epic Western Spotlight, we introduce you to Lauren, who is very important every day to the lives of the Tennessee Titans. Lauren Silvio is in her second season as the Titans nutrition coordinator. She quickly built respect around the Titans with her knowledge, her background, her ability, and her professionalism. But she also occupies an important role to today's football players. These guys understand that nutrition is a major part of their preparation. I would say nutrition is a huge role. You know, one thing is I'm here as a resource for them. I can't, you know, have them do everything. Like I can tell them what to do and I can educate them on what to do, but they have to actually take that knowledge and use it themselves. Lauren Silvio earned her undergraduate degree at Alabama and a master's degree at LSU. After three years of internships, she was hired full-time at LSU before handling nutrition at all for six years. The Titans hired her prior to the 2022 season. The team quickly learned that multitasking may be her most impressive skill. A normal day sees Lauren Silvio never stop. I'll go in and work on anything I need to from like a meal plan standpoint or maybe talk with the chefs in the kitchen about what menus we're doing during the season. They'll come out for a snack prior to practice because we practice right in the middle of the day. And so it's kind of an interesting scheduling situation with food, making sure they're eating the right things before they go out to practice and then coming back in from practice and having another kind of lunch situation. Um, so you want to make sure that you're telling them what to eat that's not going to hurt their stomach before they go out and run, um, making sure that there are things they're going to have enough energy to go out there because sometimes they worry that if they eat too much in the mornings, they're not going to feel good at practice. But there's kind of that balance and helping each guy understand what they need to be doing from that standpoint. And then after practice, um, we'll come back in, have lunch. I'll be in there if they have any questions about stuff, what's put on their plate. During this past offseason, she came up with a plan for every player. They talk goals, nutrition, staying consistent with the plan, etc. And Lauren Silvio is a constant presence. She isn't just in her office or in the cafeteria. She's at practice, in meeting rooms, on the sidelines during games, on road trips, you name it. Yeah, it's, it's a huge relationship building to be present at all times and in different spaces. So if you sit in your office all day, they might be a little intimidated to come in and talk to you if they don't get to know you, if you're not in the meal room, if you're not at practice helping them. Um, that's something that's really important to build those relationships and trust because nutrition can be a thing that people don't really want to talk about. It may be more fitting to call Lauren Silvio the Titans nutrition coach. Her trust and respect among Titans players seems to be growing by the day. As long as we can continue to emphasize nutrition, I think that's the most important thing. And I have great support from Coach Brabel and Frank in the weight room um, and the athletic training staff as well. So being able to have all of those people kind of supporting nutrition and being able to help the guys is the ultimate goal. And I think that um, 
the more that I'm here, the more that we can implement new things and you know educate more and kind of find where we want to increase nutrition's role. Lauren Silvio, important to this football team. Yeah, absolutely. She does a fantastic job. I love her energy, love her spirit. I love the fact that, you know, during practice, she's out there hustling and helping Todd and his staff and coordinates the meals and plans the meals. And, you know, we get these rookies and a lot of them don't have the same type of nutrition that the SEC schools or Big Ten schools or bigger schools had. And, you know, she teaches them how to go shopping and, and cook and make meals at home in the off season or during the season at night when, when maybe they're not here at work. So, just a great role, and, and again, no job is, is too small for Lauren, and, and we appreciate what she does. Uh, her first role is, is making sure that the players are, are healthy um, internally and that you know they're, they're trying to eat the right things and, and have the right supplements, and then, uh, and then anything else that she can do, she does. Kids Ask Coach Frabel is up next, but before we go to break, let's meet our four other Mr. Football winners from earlier today. Jalen Mosley, wide receiver safety, Jackson Christian High School. Amari Jefferson, wide receiver, University of Alabama. Cruz Law, linebacker, University of North Carolina. Owen Taylor, kicker punter. The Mike Rabel Show continues, presented by Seat Geek. We are here in the Bet MGM studio, and it's time for kids. Yeah, ask blah, blah, blah. Let's get to Jalissa. Let's go. Kids ask Coach Rabel. Hi, Coach Rabel. My name is Jaleesa. I'm 11. And my question is, is it difficult coaching all of those players at once? No. No, it's not difficult. Uh, you know what I mean? I think that it, sometimes it is. I think that that's a fantastic question to be able to say, is it difficult to coach all those players at once? And uh, everybody's got a different personality. We've got different positions. We've got um, players from, from different parts of the, the, the country. They're from different backgrounds. And I think that's what makes it amazing and also challenging at the same time is, is that you're trying to build a team and you've got players that have been with you for a while. You've got some that are new. You've got some that, you know, just came here this past week or a couple weeks ago, and, and you're trying to combine all that and figure all that out. So it, it is challenging. It's rewarding. Uh, but at times it, it can, you know, be difficult and, and trying to do all that and maintain that type of um, structure and culture that we want to build when we're not having success. And, and I know that um, that's why we're here. We're here to win. Uh, but uh, it's amazingly rewarding, and, and I know that those are going to come sooner. Jaleesa, that was a really good question. Is it okay if I say that? Yes, okay. you can chime in. It was a really good question. Is it okay if I throw it a break now? Absolutely. All right. Back with Mike Vrabel's Nissan Keys to Success. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by CQ. Time for the Nissan Keys to Success on the Mike Vrabel Show. Titans don't play until next Monday night at Miami. And so let's start with momentum and field position. How do special teams potentially create that? Yeah, by covering kicks, by protecting our, our punters. You know what I mean? We, we can't, um, you know, we can't put that stuff on tape. That, that's, uh, that's not acceptable. We know that. Um, we got to make our kicks. Uh, we've, we've done a decent job you know, and kick off coverage, but that's how you send messages. And you go down there and you, and you rally around uh, the guy making tackles, you do what Tajay does here and get us out past the 35 yard line. This is all part of it. And uh, it's a great drive starter, it's great field position on the 36 yard line for us to go down there and score a touchdown. You hope to have a punter tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a punter tomorrow. We just need to make sure we got one by Monday night. That's it, all right, fair enough. Uh, defense has to be great with eyes and assignments. Why is that Well, it's mine? just everything before the snap. There's so many uh, formations and motions that they're, you know, coming from every which way. Uh, and, and everybody has an assignment, right? Defensive linemen, linebackers, everybody has to adjust to somebody. You know, this team will run the football. They have multiple run schemes. Uh, very, very effective at it. They average over five yards a carry, you know, and we know how explosive they can be down the field. Yeah, the crazy stat about the Miami Dolphins is they average 285 passing, but 143 rushing. I don't think most people would expect that. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been up in games, right? And so they've been able to run the football and, you know, they get a lot of split safety with as much passing and, you know, they, they've hit some runs. I got the third one. 
You're going to have to score points, and you're going to have to drive the football. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to consume the football, um, you know, to beat a team that this is this explosive. You know, three and outs aren't, is going to put too much stress on our defense. And, you know, you look at Philadelphia, they, they had the ball for 37 minutes, and, and Miami had it for 23. And, you know, that, that's got to be the formula we have to be able to, to try Thanks to possess Thanks for carrying the me tonight. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank had you. a little rough, tough night with the boys. Nah, we made it through. Next Monday night. 715 Titans at Miami next Tuesday night, the Mike Vrabel Show. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody.